my dear Will. My dear one. My dear, darling Bunty. Hello, I'm Vicky Glukowski Broad, record specialist here at the National Archives. In this exhibition, With Love, Letters of Love, Loss and Longing, we explore 500 years of written expressions of love. The written expressions of love from across our collection come in many forms. So we have conventional expressions of love letters, romantic love letters, but also unconventional forms of expression, such as wills and legal documents as well. In the next few minutes, I'll be showing you some of the highlights of the exhibition. In this case, we're looking at themes around reputation and the barriers to love. The first example we have is a letter written by James Ramsay MacDonald, the working class Labour leader, to Lady Margaret Sackville. She was an aristocratic writer and socialite, and we have around 150 letters in our collection written by Ramsay MacDonald to Sackville. And within these letters, there's evidence of three occasions where Ramsay MacDonald asks for Lady Margaret Sackville to marry him, but gets turned down. There were many potential barriers to their relationship, but the biggest one was thought to be religion. Sackville was Roman Catholic, whereas Ramsay MacDonald was brought up in the Presbyterian Church. Tell me all about you. Your body, your soul, your heart. Do you want to kiss me? Do you want to come into the jungle? Just explain yourself, for you are such a stranger. Why aren't you here? I want you and you are hundreds of miles away and I cannot even kiss you. This record is similar in theme. It's written by Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, to Queen Elizabeth I in 1588. Dudley and Elizabeth were childhood friends and rumoured to be lovers throughout her life. Dudley died before Elizabeth and this is his last letter to her. Um, it has some interesting references in it to show the closeness of their relationship. We can see that one of the words on the final line of the first sentence says poor but with two dashes over the O's. And that was a reference to the name that Elizabeth called Robert Dudley. She called him Eyes. This letter was found by her bed upon her death. In this case, we have two extreme examples of sacrifices for love. The first one is a letter written by the pauper Daniel Rush to the Poor Law Board. He's complaining about his treatment because he's found himself in extreme poverty and needs help from the Poor Law Board. He wrote to complain because the suggestion from the local Bethnal Green Poor Law Union was that he and his wife should go to the workhouse and therefore be separated. And we went on Tuesday the 19th and they insisted on separating me from my wife, which I have had 49 years, or turn us out. And sooner than we will be separated, we will perish for want. This is the instrument of abdication of Edward VIII. In this abdication, he declares his irrevocable determination to renounce the throne. And this was in part due to the woman he loved. He was to marry Wallace Simpson, who was an American. She had been divorced once and was in the process of being divorced again. So it was very controversial at the time and risked a constitutional crisis. Here we have a very emotive letter from James Gillespie. In 1919, race riots took place in port towns across the country. Upon an attack on his fish and chip shop, he wrote to Lloyd George, the Prime Minister at the time. Sir, I am a native of Jamaica, British West Indies. I started a little business in the refreshment department, fish fryers, until the last racial riot, 12th of June, 1919, when my home was destroyed by the rioters. I applied for repatriation for myself and my family several times. I am willing to leave the country at once with my wife and child, not without. I am begging, honoured sir, as leader of the British Empire to give me and my family passage to Jamaica. Trusting sir, you will take compassion on one of Britain's son, even if his colour is black.
The card and letter we have here are from Hetty to her sweetheart, William Crawford. Hetty and William were separated by the First World War while he was away fighting on the Western Front. We know that many will have to give their lives yet before this war will end. But my one prayer is that they will never take you. I should be broken-hearted if they were to take you. These sentiments would have been very relatable to many people at the time who would have been separated by war. And indeed, we do know in this case that William sadly died of war wounds just a year after this letter was sent. Here we have a letter written by Cyril to his darling Morris. Essentially, it's a love letter, but it's a love letter between two men written in the 1930s. And at the time, that was incredibly risky, even to write or express your love as a man to another man. Cyril writes, I only wish that I was going away with you, just you and I, to eat, sleep and make love together. This letter was found in a really interesting context. Originally, it was torn up and found under a divan in the caravan club, and then it was found by police. The version we have here was typed up as police evidence. The caravan club was a club in 1934 that was open for just six weeks, and it gave a relatively safe space for men to meet other men in a time where the law essentially criminalized their love. Although not conventional items expressing feelings of love, wills actually hold great power and can tell us a lot about the past, as we can see here in the case of Anne Lister and Anne Walker. The two were lovers and also lived together at Shibden Hall. When the two were traveling, Anne Lister tragically died. And here we have a copy of her will. It signifies the close nature of their relationship, although Anne Walker is described as a friend. In an unusual twist, there is an interesting stipulation in the will. Anne Lister wrote that if Walker should marry, she would be disinherited, as if the said Anne Walker should have then departed this life. So essentially preventing Anne Walker from marrying again without losing the estate in Shibden Hall. This item actually gives us a huge insight now into the lives of women like Anne Lister and Anne Walker, and we can now celebrate the records that do exist that share their stories. All my love, sweetheart, you all are very much in my thoughts. Yours as long as life endures, Catherine. I kiss and embrace you long and closely, and ever so sweetly, my dear. 